Hello everyone and welcome back to The Void. I know I've been away for just a little bit, but that's because I've been outside working on the Helium Outdoor Final Build, which I'm going to show you today. I wanted to show you not only how cool it looks, I think, in my own opinion, and uh, how it's actually really helped my profits and what I plan on doing to improve that in the future. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Alrighty, so what we've got here is a little bit of uh, footage of me going ahead and starting my build. Uh, you can see that, uh, you know, one, this is sped up quite a bit. Uh, this is actually at 2000% speed because this video was actually going to be super long if I didn't do this. Uh, so right here, what I'm basically doing is I'm just going ahead and digging the hole. Um, I'll explain kind of what that looks like in a bit. I'm placing the form molds in. Uh, these are the little pieces of wood you see going in there. That's for the concrete that will eventually pour. And uh, this took a little bit because there's actually a large abundance of clay underneath the um, <laughs> topsoil here. So I actually had to dig, get down, dig, get down. It just took a lot longer than I expected. So anyway, uh, what you'll see here is I'll get the form mold finally put in. And then I will actually go ahead and... Uh, tap in some of the PVC piping and some of the uh, metal um, brackets that I bought to support all this. So, you know, you can just see me tapping in here, just getting the final build, you know, of the form put in. And then it started getting a little dark. Here's the actual things that keep it in place. But then, um, yeah, now I'm going in for the uh, PVC. And then all the little parts that I need. This is the metal brackets. So this is the metal bracket, the first one that went in. And then this is the PVC. You know, I was like trying to level it out. That's the uh, ground, the concrete base. So I'm putting the level on here. I'm trying to level it. And then, yep, tapping in the uh, metal brackets you can see there. And I'm putting the clamp around it. This kind of holds this all in place while I eventually will pour the concrete. Now, the thing I'll say about this is that the uh, time of night got a little dark for a recording, so I just kind of skipped ahead, and I'll show you what that looks like. Alrighty, and you couldn't see it in my previous video, but this is what I finished yesterday. So what we have here is a 2 foot by 2 foot, 6 inch deep concrete slab. This is about 240 pounds of concrete, which I mixed by hand, and uh, that almost broke my drill. It actually burnt me because uh, it got that hot <laughs> while doing it by hand. And it almost fried the drill. It started smoking, so that was kind of cool. Anyway, what we've got here is we've got a 3-inch PVC pipe that we'll put our mast antenna into. We've got a 3-inch coupler, which I'm going to use this just for security, so this kind of makes it harder to steal if someone tried to. Um, not that that's a concern, but just in case. Then we've also got these 6-foot uh, tall uh, metal pipes, or metal uh, L brackets of steel that we've used to actually secure the uh, the PVC in place. Then we've got this uh, hose clamp around this, just to kind of hold the whole thing in place. This is way overbuilt, but um, I don't think this is going to go anywhere. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead, get our mast inserted into this, and then we'll go ahead and put the uh, guy lines up. So you'll see like some serious cables going across my yard here. I'll take some video of that, but uh, at least we got this. So we have to let this cure for 48 hours because we don't want the uh, PVC or the the steel to actually shift while we're doing this. Um, not that I think it will because it's 240 pounds of concrete, but uh, we're just going to let it do its thing and we'll uh, go from there. Alrighty, so what we're going to go ahead and do here is just go ahead and get the telescoping uh, part of the um, flagpole slash radio mast in. Uh, I already had the base put in there from the previous night that I just didn't show. And uh, what I'll do next is get the guy lines started. And uh, you can see those red things in my hand. Those are the uh, anchors. And what I'm going to do is basically just line up the guy ring and then walk backwards in the yard. Very scientific method, right? So you can see I'm doing it right there. And um, what I'm doing is I'm just spinning them into the ground and getting them placed into the yard. Now, the thing I'll say about this is uh, you'll see that there's a silver thing in my hand at this point. 
which is actually the concrete mixing paddle. Uh, it took me quite a while to get some of these anchors into the ground because the um, clay and the ground itself is very hard. So, uh, you know, I'm just lining it up and getting them spun in. And eventually, uh, once I get these all spun in, I'll start with uh, one guy line as a test, right? And so here's the guy cables. That's that right there. Yep. And I did a very scientific method for this, too. Uh, I measured this out. I'll show you the math behind all this, too. Uh, I'm just taking measurements, remembering in my head. And then uh, I'm going to use some good old geometry to figure out the length of the guy lines. So I'll go ahead and show you exactly what that math looks like here in a second. Okay, so ignore my chicken scratch here, but this is at least the uh, four triangles we had. They're all different, and you can see them here. Um, I had to calculate each one, so I've got um, 32 feet, 36 feet, 40 feet, and 46 feet. Now, I added two feet to each of these uh, just because of the height difference in the yard. And I guess this is as good as time as any to uh, basically say go ahead and like, share, subscribe, comment down below if you like the content. Uh, I need all the help I can get. Also, we are going to go ahead and start a Discord channel for a community that I'm going to try and build for everybody. So uh, I'll put a link down below for that uh, in the description, and uh, I look forward to chatting with all you there. And uh, let's go ahead and get back into it. Alrighty, so what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're basically just going to measure out our guy lines. And uh, the first thing I did was basically just start from the shortest one to the longest one. I used my forearm as a measurement tool since the length of one down side and one up side is about two feet. So that's why I'm just wrapping it around my arms here, you can see. Um, basically, you know, I'm just going to do the four and get them cut. And then once I'm done getting these cut, um, you'll see that I basically go over and tie one down. Or I will tie one down. And I'll start measuring a test guy line, essentially. So, you know, I'm done measuring them here. And then I take the first shortest one over, obviously. I lost my headband, apparently. And then I tie the one off, <clears throat> and I go to the, the guy line uh, anchor that I put in, and I tie it down to the other end at the farthest point. Uh, and now what I'll do here is basically start raising the pole uh, for this so that I can get it to the height that I expect it to be. And once it's in place, um, you know, we should be we should be good. So the other thing I'll note about this is you can see me like measuring. So I'm like, I've got this calculated out. Each one of these upper segments, these top three should be three uh, feet tall. Um, I pinched my fingers a few times. That was fun. Um, here's the other thing too. You basically have um, a problem with these telescoping antennas where right here you can see I dropped one of the telescopes inside of the other and now I have to pull them all out and I have to reset the rings. And uh, yeah, so don't do what I did. I did this twice. And every time you do it, it gets progressively harder. So you can see me putting it all back together and then just putting it back, you know, and getting it back up there. This was extremely difficult, not fun because um, this thing weighs 60 pounds. And I'm already I'm just on a little step stool. So I ended up getting a ladder here at this point, I think. Yeah. And because <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is too short. I'm too short. This is, this is terrible. So we made our, made our lives easier. Uh, started moving the pole up, getting it into place. You know, measure, get it up, measure. So it was three feet, three feet, uh, four feet, and four feet. Thankfully, it was a nice day out for this, so it wasn't like, too windy or, you know, too uh, much of a pain to get this up there. I got it finally to the top and I got the guy line. Now I'm just tying it down, making sure it's not too taut. You don't want your guy lines to be super tight because, you know, they're made for stability, not for like strength holding. Um, the, the strength should come from the pole. Now, this pole is it doesn't have a wind rating to it, but I will say that I expect it to be fine up until about uh, probably 60 miles an hour. I'll probably lower it down around that mileage. 
uh, with the flag on it. I'll take the flag down at around 20 um, just because it, it's only a fiberglass pole, not aluminum. Yeah, I mean, you can even see it flex a little bit as I'm working on it. Um, you know, I'm bringing it back down now. So this is where I'm going to get the other uh, four guy lines in place. And we're just going to tie them off here. <clears throat> each one at a time uh <laughs> now i did try to do like an indiana jones thing where i tried to like throw these things and i ended up tangling them I, uh, you know the first one i threw worked fine the other three i threw uh did not work and i ended up having to untangle all of them so you know see i tried it again i got this mess here's me <laughs> now this is this is the infinite struggle don't do what i did um anyway get it in place get it tied down and then we're going to go ahead and tie that one off. And, you know, and for whatever reason, even though I just went through that entire mess, I'm going to do it again here in a second. So we're going to go ahead and just get this done. You can see me still. I'm still struggling with this thing. OK, finally got it. Tie it off. Get the guy line in place. And there we go. We've got all of them up. And there we go. So now we're getting to the top and we're just making sure now we're tight now we're going to tighten them down a little bit one by one and just make sure it looks good and you can see i'm just kind of jiggling it kind of retying it making sure it's not too tight again you don't want to over tighten these uh, i did have to cut a couple of the cables shorter because again i added four feet to some of them and it, it made it really hard to tie knots um so got that done you know and went from one to the other and this should be the last one that i have to go to over here in a second there i go and we're done with this so that's the guidelines got those all up in place and uh this should be the final part where we get the rest of it in place all right so what we're doing here is we're just getting set back up and i'm going inside right now to grab all the parts that we'll need to complete this build um what's left is basically the antenna uh portion the flag and getting the freedom fi uh set up inside of the uh, altlex box so you'll see the antenna popping out here in a second and uh the flag's already attached i kind of did some pre-work here uh you can see that i've got like the drip loop cabled up there that little loop at the top i'm uh cabling up the surge arrestor right now and uh cutting ground wires and stripping ground wires and stuff so that's me doing that right here and we're just getting that crimped down taped obviously getting all the cables sorted out now this is one thing i'll say is that when i had the flag attached and everything it was kind of a pain uh i also did screw up again where i dropped the telescoping part inside of the other part so this is me redoing all of that <laughs> and uh it's infinitely more hard when you have all of the uh cables hanging around so Try not to do that if you buy this telescoping baton because or this telescoping uh, flagpole slash radio mast. It's kind of a pain. So here I am uh, messing around with the Freedom 5, just making sure it's locked in place. I'm getting the uh, back plate situated with the um, clamps that hold it down. These are the adjustable clamps that I've used for a lot of this project. So I'm just getting the height set up. I'm measuring again, getting it all the way to the top portion to where the cable's kind of hanging out. And now I'm getting the um, the Altlex box situated. Now, I did find that getting this uh, put together at the bottom first because of the cable, the um, cable management, or not the cable management, but the uh, the holder for the, like the actual adjustable holders for the Altlex box were way more difficult to do while holding it up. Um, did it on the ground. And then finally, I got tired of doing this by hand. So I grabbed a power drill, which you can see here. And the power drill was awesome. I highly recommend. Don't ever use a hand screwdriver. Anyway, so we got that mounted. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're actually just going to get everything cabled up and connected. So I'm opening it up, pulling the cables through. I dropped the uh, Ethernet cable, which is that cable on the left there. And, uh, you know, I got the antenna cable connected. Did some, uh, just some cleanup, some maintenance, you know, taped it to the... Uh, flagpole just kind of hold it in place and then what we're going to do here is we're going to basically get this scooted up in the right place and then we'll get the uh, grounding wires connected cut 
and uh, connected to the lightning rod, which is what I'm doing here. And then once we get this done, that's most of it. So then we'll be putting the flag up and that should be happening here in a second. So that'll be uh, pretty much the end of it. And then I'll show you kind of what the final build looks like here in a second uh, from a better angle from the second story of my house. That way you can kind of get a better idea of, you know, how it actually looks when it's all done. So yeah, that's the complete build so far. All right, everyone, this is my final build for the whole thing. When it's all said and done, this is actually a picture from my second story window. So this kind of gives you like a height perspective. I've got the, the flag up there. I got the drip loop. I've got the box. You know, I had a neighbor that said they loved it. I had a neighbor that drove by. I said hi, and they said nothing, and they looked at it very weird. So mixed results. I think I enjoy it, though, and that's the, the main thing. Uh, you know, I'm within zoning codes and all that good stuff. So we've got this up. Uh, it's working. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, all in all, successful build. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and take a look at what the profits are. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our profits here. So you can see here on March 16, 17, 18, 19, uh, I had 0 .5, 0 0.05 or lower HNT. Um, March 20th, I had zero. Don't know why that one was. But the day after I got this on the rig, I went all the way up to 0.11, which is the network average. So I'm at the network average right now, and that's with no modification. That was just me getting it outside and with the 8DB antenna. Now, I think if I can get this up even just a little bit higher, I'm going to actually apply for a special radio permit, and um, maybe I can get this up to 48 feet. <laughs> We'll see. Uh, that's going to require some even more crazy modifications. We're going to need more guidelines. We're going to need more, um, well, just I, I have to get city council's approval. It's a whole thing. Anyway, so um, at least right now we're at 0.11. Now, what I'll say about that is, remember, we have a, a 1.5 to 2 dB loss from the cable length, which is 20 feet. And we also have the lightning arrestor in place, which reduces our... Um, ability to make it a full 8 dbi now i will say i am seeing places very far away now i i'm seeing some places that are over 30 kilometers away um which is pretty great if i throw a couple more dbi on that now i have the dbi um amplifier that's coming i'm gonna basically put it back to the 8 dbi so it's just plus two and then i'm gonna put the uh, saw cavity filter on there so that i filter out all the noise Hopefully that'll make it even better. I'll have a build on that too. But um, yeah, I mean, we've 300X'd our profits right now with this one miner. Now I'll even up this more just by moving my other miner still out of this hex. Now that's gonna go uh, to a different place altogether, a different state even. And um, I'm gonna send that down again to my buddy as I mentioned in the previous video. But we should see this go up even further because the two won't be competing against each other. So all in all, um, I'll take a 300x for what this is. Now, I'll say that the ROI time is still pretty high, but this is really fun. I've done a lot of things I haven't done before. I've learned a lot of things I haven't learned before. And um, yeah, I mean, 300x on this is pretty nice. So we'll, we'll take it. All righty, everyone. I hope you enjoyed watching the build that we uh, just did. And again, if you could like, share, subscribe, comment down below. I need all the help I can get. And I applaud you if you've been watching this long. Again, I will be making a Discord, which is down below, as well as all the parts that I use for this build. So if you want to buy anything that, you know, I used, it may or may not support me. If not, go support the companies that, you know, I bought from anyways, because uh, they make good products. Anyway, that's uh, my build, and I hope you all have a good day, and I'll catch you in the void next time.